what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Motherboards.org. I'm Elric Ferris here once again with my co-host, JJ from ASUS. Now, everybody out there has a network of one type or another because everybody uses the internet through their TV, through everything. And there are a lot of emerging technologies that people don't know that much about. And that's what we're actually going to hand the floor to JJ and he's gonna discuss that technology. So right now we have 802.11n and 802.11ac, which is emerging, and JJ's going to give you a quick glimpse into that future. So let's go, Jay. Yeah, um, perfect introduction. I mean, overall, right now, you know, uh, wireless connectivity is really coming become a backbone. Excuse me, a backbone for how people are connecting to their devices in their home. Right. I mean, you're talking about smartphones being Wi-Fi enabled, consoles being hardline or Wi-Fi enabled, Streaming. tablets, um, you know, desktops, uh, notebooks. You're looking at connectivity being a huge aspect of just your day in and day out use of technology. And the backbone of all that is going to be your router. Um, as part of that, your router is going to have different types of wireless standards that are available to it. Uh, there's definitely still people that are out there that might be utilizing legacy based solutions, so 802.11G uh, based solutions, and not even the newest N based standards. Um, but when considering what you now have on the market, there's a couple of different standards to take consideration. You first noted one is definitely a product like this guy, which is 802.11n. This has gone through a couple of different revisions and it's incrementally got faster and faster and faster. Um, you can really have some outstanding performance with 802.11n products. You can get pretty much kind of a, a great experience when it comes to streaming content, whether you're talking about just SD content or even HD content, low latency gaming, high throughput for bandwidth, um, you can really have a very robust solution. So it's not, not bad by any stretch of the imagination, especially when you're talking about higher performing solutions that might be like two by two or three by three. Now, uh, I know you had some questions actually, what was I talking about when yeah. I had about like one, one by one or two by two or three by three? You can see here we have this product and it actually has three antennas. Each one of these antennas is rated for essentially 150 megabits. So if we go 150, 150, and 150, that gives us 450. So when we talk about like an N-based product that's let's say like N900, that's a three by three on the 2.4 gigahertz, and then a three by three on the five gigahertz. So we add that together and that gives us N900, right? Um, so of course, the higher the number, the better the throughput, the overall more experience that we have at being able to do all these cool connections all at one time. Well, hook me up with the N9 million then. <laughs> We're working on that, definitely right. towards the future. Um, with AC, we have a, a future standard that's really been built off of the five gigahertz spectrum. So unlike the older specs, which kind of take into consideration the older standard with 2.4 and five gigahertz, AC is really focused at giving you the highest level of HD high bitrate performance right now and even moving towards the, the future. Um, so for users that are really interested in getting the maximum level of performance, the highest level of throughput, even approaching, you know, uh, let's say wired based speeds or even and sometimes even getting better than standard 10 100 uh, wired based speeds through the wireless. Yeah. Wireless, uh, 802.11 and wireless is going to be that solution for you. So it's definitely not going to be uh, focused at the normal consumer. This is kind of like a bleeding edge um, wireless standard. Like uh, it, it. It's bleeding actually edge. it's still in its draft specification, but we spend a lot of time to make sure that it's reliable. Um, it supports, of course, all the previous standards. So this being an uh, AC product, it will fully support all your old end products. But, but plus all the new protocols as well. Exactly. Now, right now, there's no AC products on the market in terms of like you can't go buy like a smartphone or like a tablet or a notebook and have AC supported. Not right now. Not right now. So this is kind of fruit to proofing yourself for the for the future. Um, but we will so, actually... So real quick, JD, when is the standard actually supposed to emerge? Um, that's a little bit hard to nail down. You're probably going to go through two more drafts before we get to the final AC specification. Um, but what I will tell you is you can take real world advantage of it right now. Um, and there's going to be two options the way you can do that. Uh, shortly in the future, in about a month or two, we're going to actually have our first generation AC clients. So we'll have a PCIe card and a USB solution. So you'll be able to attach that to like a notebook or a desktop to be able to do 80 to 11 AC from this access point to that USB enabled system. Um, so that's one option. Or another solution might be, let's say like in a home environment where you need really high throughput, but it's not easy for you to run a cable. You could go ahead and set up two AC units 
and have that AC unit maybe in your HTPC area where you have like a console, you've got a TV, maybe you have an HTPC, and you're gonna run the ethernet from that router to all those devices, but the signal being received- Is that in bridge mode? Is, yes, that exactly. That's that would in bridge be, mode, okay. That would be in a bridge mode kind of situation. And that's where AC really is compelling because it's bringing you a high level of throughput that's not normally available. So um, let's just play that for like users out there. So like say you have a giant size house. The back of your room is far away from your living room. You can connect two of these together and then share that signal strength throughout the entire house through bridge mode, correct? Yeah, you could definitely do that and, and work to really give you that high level of throughput and performance. So rounding it out, the, the, the kind of the numbers will help to paint a little bit of a picture. Uh, an example is realistically on the best performing end products, you're gonna be looking at about throughput of I'd say about 180 to about 250 megabits right? Um, that's real world throughput. There's a lot of numbers that you'll see on a product like 750 or a 900, but that's the theoretical. When we're talking about hardline reality, you're going to, like I said, be about 180 to about 250. AC products uh, on the highest end, so if like you're using two bridge modes um, and, you, and you're and you taking a look at the real world throughput performance, it's going to be somewhere between about 375 to almost 500 megabits. So realistically, almost double, double. the whole performance yeah. of what you can have with end-based solutions. So um, that's kind of giving you a little bit of perspective. Otherwise from that, there's going to be a huge amount of features and functions um, that are going to be specific to not only end products, but AC products that we have on our series of routers that we're going to discuss as we take a look at some of these other products here. Right on. And these two little things right here, which I call the ASUS Mind Control, why don't you give our little viewers a little bit of discussion on these little things too that kind of look like the building at the LAX. Yeah, um, you know, to kind of round out, I guess, this whole discussion on N and AC, um, some users might not always be aware that in their different types of wireless uh, integrated clients that there's different levels of performance. So maybe if you have like a notebook or a desktop that has wireless or doesn't have it, but you're looking to get the best range and the best throughput, um, devices like these, which are uh, either ethernet based or USB based, these are high performance three by three solutions. So they're ideally matched to kind for of go- the three antennas. The three antennas to give you that high throughput, that high range and, and overall best signal stability. But they also do work with the other ones as well. They're just made for the optimal for this, correct? Correct, and this is just part of kind of always considering what type of device you should be using relative to your network. Um, some users are gonna be okay with a one-by-one -one solution, maybe in a basic little apartment, but as you get to maybe bigger multi-room apartment, small house, to large houses, multi-story environments, you need to kind of consider going up from maybe one-by-one -one to two-by-two -two to maybe three-by-three three three solutions. Three. All right, folks, so with that said, if you guys would like to see any of the information on either one of these products, just click on their box where we have the full-length videos describing all the great features of these two RT products by the people over at ASUS. We'll see you then.